Hello everyone, and welcome to Real Estate for Noobs, where I explain complex real estate topics in super simple terms with pretty graphics. I'm Derek, partner at the Manhattan real estate development firm YD Development, and today we'll be learning about the relationship between NOI, cap rate, and valuation. Let's start with the property's NOI, or net operating income. This is a specific line item on the profit and loss statement, or PL. It's one of the three major financial statements that give you a clear picture of a company's health, the other two being the cash flow statement and the balance sheet. Now, I don't expect or require any of you to have a familiarity with accounting, so let's imagine the PL is a pipe and money is water. Flowing into your pipe is all the income from your tenants for rent and whatever else you might be collecting for billboards, cell tower rental, laundry, vending machines, amenities, etc. This is your gross revenue, the total amount of money you collected for a given time period. Let's use a year in this case. But you can't just drink this water yourself because you need to pay operating expenses or OPEX to maintain the building. So the water flows out a number of little pipes for things like a management fee, repairs, maintenance, utilities, inspections, security, tenant turnover costs, property taxes, insurance, etc., etc. Now, if you're running a fairly efficient and profitable building, most of the water will still flow to you at the end. Somewhere around 70 to 75% of gross revenue is a very healthy number. The amount that flows to you, the owner, is called the net operating income, or NOI. You can use that water for whatever you want. Drink it, shower with it, shower other people with it. Up to you, supposing you don't have debt on the property. Which leads me to another aside. In real estate, the NOI is also called EBITDA, which stands for Earnings Before Interest Taxes, not Property Taxes, Depreciation and Amortization. We'll get back to this, but not today. Let's move on to property values. Let's recap. A property generates revenue streams, but there are associated costs called operating expenses. What's left flows through to you, the owner, and is called NOI. Now, when people invest in a stable property, meaning that there's almost full occupancy and the building is in good condition, they expect to generate a specific NOI off of the money that they put in. If you were to measure that specific NOI amount as a percentage of the property value, that percentage would be called the capitalization rate or the cap rate. So suppose the NOI on a building is 50,000 and you paid 1 million for it. Your cap rate is 5%. Looking at this backwards, suppose you own a building that's generating 50,000 a year in NOI, and all the buildings in the area are selling at a 5% cap rate, or 5 cap for short. Then your building would be worth 50,000 divided by 5%, which is equal to 1 million. If the building is selling at a 6 cap, then your building would be worth $833,333.33, or at a 4 cap, $1.25 million. So going back to the pipe analogy, Let's imagine that your P&L pipe is attached to a massive water tank to represent your property value. The cap rate links the diameter of the pipe to the size of the water tank. The bigger the water tank, the thicker the pipe, the higher your water flow. For you physics nerds, the flow of the water is proportional to the pipe diameter. Let's do another recap. When you buy a stable property, it comes with the ability to generate predictable NOI. That NOI is a small percentage of the price you pay for the property, and the percentage rate is called the cap rate. Now let's talk a little bit more about valuations because the relationship between NOI and property value is highly subject to a variety of market forces. Because what someone is willing to pay to get 3, 4, 5, 6% or more depends on things that should reflect the risk level and the return potential. Things like if the neighborhood is becoming nicer. Or on the flip side, if it's in a very remote area, maybe it's hard to find tenants when leases end. Or outside of real estate, maybe there's other securities like bonds that offer similar returns without all the hassle of the maintenance. Or maybe interest rates are rising, affecting the price of debt, limiting how much a buyer would be willing to pay for something. For example, Manhattan trades at lower cap rates than the outer boroughs, like Brooklyn. That means 1 million invested in Manhattan gets you less NOI than 1 million invested in Brooklyn. But that's because Manhattan has historically been a safer investment, retains its value, and appreciates more. Back to the analogy, water tanks in Manhattan tend to be more leak-proof. So without going into detail about all these local and macroeconomic factors, the point I'm making is that just be aware 
that the cap rate represents how much an investor expects to earn in NOI based on how much they pay for the property. This leads to some very interesting mechanics when you start to think about how you can improve your NOI so you can sell your property at a higher valuation. We'll cover that in the next video. If you guys have other real estate topics you're wondering about, let us know in the comments. We'll be building off of today's lesson in the next video, so make sure you hit like and subscribe.